Hey everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also keeps the giveaways running. That's right, I've got another giveaway this week from my friends over at Fox Airsoft. So now they're doing one with the M40 A5 gas rifle, that's like the sniper rifle from ASG. So these guys keep coming out with some amazing, amazing giveaways. So if you guys wanna enter, don't forget, it's the usual routine, link down there, takes you over, sign up for their newsletter, and you're in the running. Make sure you do re-sign up, every single time they have a new contest, you've gotta be signed up for the new one. So just follow that link down in the description and you will be good to go. Um, aside from that, pretty light week, so that means more time for questions and we're gonna dive right on in with the Palco Mail Call. Greg McCurry writes, hey Jay, just wanna ask if I should get a pistol for CQB. I run a submachine gun, also is getting an AI grenade a good substitute to a pistol? All right, for those of you who aren't into the acronyms, an AI grenade is the airsoft innovations like a tornado grenade, either the timer or the impact version or the new cyclone one. And if you guys have been watching the channel, you'll see I did put a review up for one of those. So definitely go check that one out. I'll put a link at the very end of this video if you guys wanna watch it. And of course, down in the description. But to answer your question, if you're running a submachine gun, typically those are pretty small. If you have enough magazines, I can't say enough. Uh, to make the investment in good amount of magazines. That's probably the most important thing. So with the assumption here that you have a good amount of magazines, um, a pistol could be a good choice, but I would definitely run that grenade because with the submachine gun, it's so small, you already have the maneuverability already. Uh, to go to a pistol could be kind of redundant as long as you don't need a backup. Typically CQB games are pretty tight and quick and you'll miss maybe a few minutes if you have to go back and get a different gun off the battlefield. So the grenade, is huge help. It can get around corners where you can't and you usually have to expose yourself. You can usually lob that sucker in and make it happen. There's so many advantages to having a grenade in CQB. So uh, instead of making that investment and buying a hundred and something dollar pistol, definitely pick up a grenade or two. You're gonna find you're gonna get a whole lot more kills having that tool in the arsenal. Joe Shop first writes, what are your opinions on mesh eye protection? Thanks. Okay, in a word, well, two words, don't use it. Actually, it's three words. So no, there's your one word. Um, mesh eye protection is no bueno. Uh, it does have small holes and you're gonna go, well, those holes are smaller than a BB could get through, but not all BBs are created equal and some of them can shatter on impact. So I've seen a lot of BBs like shatter and crack when they hit hard surfaces. Not all of them stay together and those little fragments can get through into your eyes. If you're looking for something that doesn't fog, I, I've been through a lot of stuff and I use a lot of different things. I have Oakley's with the Helo kit so it does have a gasket around your eyes so it's full seal. Um, I've used a bunch of fan goggles which are incredibly expensive, but if you're on a budget and you're looking for a decent pair of goggles, I will definitely point you toward three companies that all sell pretty much the same offering. You can get directly from the company, it's called Pyramex, makes these goggles. They're actually full seal, they have an anti-fog coating, they're dual pane, so they actually have the thermal pane lenses, so you actually have that little pocket of air that really does an amazing job keeping the fogging to a very minimum, and they either work as goggles with the strap or you can pop the strap off and put like regular sunglass stuff on, but they still have that gasket around the eyes to give you the full seal. So, and then like, those are like 20-ish dollars. They're, they're actually really affordable. I mean, well in the low end of the $20 range. I'll put a link in the description below. Also, Pyramix makes those goggles for two different other companies. They make them for Vulcan and for ASG. ASG, you're probably gonna find these at your local shop. So definitely check for them there. Uh, the ASG goggles are the same ones as well as the Vulcan ones. Just make sure you get the ones that have the thermal, like the dual pane or they say thermal lenses. Either one of those are interchangeable terms. Uh, but I've actually had really good luck with them and the most that's ever happened to me with them is they get scratched. But I'll tell you what, from a low fog goggle, especially an affordable one, they're probably the best ones I've used to date. Bailey Davis writes, if I'm trying to sell my used fun, where should I look to sell? Well, most people like to buy brand new fun. Uh, used fun is less enjoyable in my opinion, but for somebody like me who's low on fun, I will even buy the used stuff. Tactical Sniper 308 writes, hey John, what's the worst camouflage to wear to a night game? I'll start with the best, then I'll go to the worst. The best is actually the same camouflage you're gonna wear in that environment during the daytime. And for a reason, I'm gonna make the assumption you're gonna be playing against someone who may or may not have night vision, uh, like goggles, not just good eyes in the dark. Um, night vision pretty much deals with light in the same way you're gonna deal with during the daytime, at least patterns and lets you see things. Um, having a camouflage that blends well in that environment during the daytime is going to give you similar benefits 
at nighttime. The human eye is really designed to check out the silhouette of a human, you know? So we are used to tracking that in movement specifically. Uh, we're not really great with shapes, but we're, except for the human body shape is one that's kind of pre-wired in our brain. So black may have you stand out more, especially if it's a moonlit night and people can pick you up, you'll look like a black blob. Same goes for really light colored camos, like let's say Marpat, like Desert Marpat, for example. That's probably one I would stay away from. So really light and really dark. Everything in the middle of that band is probably going to be good to go. Also, of note, stick with the real stuff. Now, when I'm saying like the real camouflage, like mil-spec stuff used with mil-spec materials, uh, a lot of people don't realize that some of the off-brand or cheaper stuff doesn't use what they call solution-dyed materials, and this goes for your gear especially, and you can show up under night vision like black and white. Like, I've seriously, it's great because I have night vision. Like, the people that wear the cheap gear, it's actually pretty easy to spot them. I have an IR illuminator that only I can see or anybody with night vision can see, and you can spot people out. And when that illuminator hits them, or even when they're just in the moonlight, the, the vest will come across, like, let's say they're wearing, like, an olive drab vest. It'll be white, bright white, and then the molly across it'll be black. It'll look like a zebra to me in the middle of the night. Super easy to spot. So definitely make sure you're picking up the good stuff. That's why I do buy mil-spec gear or some of the nicer stuff that had to have solution dyed materials. It costs a little bit more, but it's definitely worth it if you're going to be playing a lot of night games, especially against guys with night vision. Joe Mahan writes, hey, really love the show. My question is about the Velcro on the top of my hat. What is it for exactly? So you're probably talking about this Velcro. I'm gonna try to get it here. It's black hat, it's kind of hard to see. Um, this Velcro right here that I've got on the top of the hat, uh, it's a circle on this one. I've seen them in squares and little diamonds or whatever. Uh, it's for a couple things. One, just to put a patch on uh, if you wanna put something crazy on there. But specifically for a friend or foe identifier patch, um, I think some of these military spec hats, it's for like, if they want to put like a IR one so they don't get shot by a plane or something, you know. Uh, being airsoft, we don't really have, you know, C-130 Hercules gunships flying over our head. But that said, you could actually stick something like a strobe or something up here. Or for me, a dead light works pretty well for night. The other reason, and I think this is the main reason, is when you're wearing communications equipment. So it gives you a place for it to Velcro on so it doesn't shift back or Forward on your head, you can actually put a little bit of the aggressive side uh, hook and loop on there and you've got the, the soft side pill here and it will stick and stay in place on this part of your hat. Also, it needs something to kind of hold the panels together on these multi-panel hats like this because your other one you have is a little beanie. I don't even see the little dot right here. That little knob right there is going to hurt so bad if you try to run head pro over here. That little sucker is going to dig right into your skull and be really annoying for a long time. So having that gone and something like Velcro who's soft in place of it so you don't have that hard knot up there is going to be a lifesaver if you run like communications over the head. Well guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from a buddy of mine, inventor and game player. I have highlighted him on here before and uh, one of the more recent videos, I really enjoyed this one. It comes from Brain Exploders, from a day of him playing at a local field, so he could be indoor field, with his Tipman M4. He had it like kind of tweaked, so he had it tuned down to 350 using a heavy bolt and then actually using a low flow, flow valve in it. And those things combined, plus it was only a three on three game. It was like him and CQB Russian, versus like three other players. So it was a lot of fun. It's kind of my dream. I know it's not great for field owners, but I love those super small games because it gives you the ability to really flank and get some real tactical maneuvers off. Use grenades tactically instead of it just being an all out plastic sling fest from both sides. Plus, you get to see all this cool stuff he makes. In fact, his reverse camera, his forward camera mount that looks like a peck box. In fact, this guy is probably the king of camera angles, so much so that Novrich got his inspiration for his third person cam, the one that goes up over shoulders, from the one that Brain Exploder built. So uh, it's just fun to watch. I enjoy all those camera angles. So if you guys haven't checked him out, definitely give him a look and also check out his stuff on the Shapeway stores. He has a ton of cool things that solves all kinds of really neat airsoft problems. And again, it's Brain Exploder, and as always, I'll have a link in the description below. Well guys, thanks a bunch as always for coming out here and hanging out, asking those great questions and being a part of the community here. Um, also, if you want to get your question on the show, it's super simple. Put it in the comment section below, vote up your favorites and we'll get them on the next show. Remember, be persistent. I read every single question, but it's just really challenged to get everyone on the show. I wish I could put them all in, but I can't. There's only so much time we have here each week, but keep putting them in. I do remember the ones and I try to get them on a show down the road. Well guys, that is it and I will see you next week. But until until then, as always, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.